This episode is brought to you by Joseph and Patrick, this week's newest patrons. Hey guys, I cannot believe we started this series at like 20 grand. And back then we were looking at weekenders and club racers that you'd buy as sort of a hobby to get into sailing on the weekends. But every week we've added 10 grand to the limit and I'm super excited every week to see what we find. This week we're going to hit another milestone number and if you're spending this much cash, you're not just weekending and club raising, you've got some loftier goals ahead of you, like taking week-long sailing trips or living aboard or even heading south. So this week, this week I'm actually going to let my little mermaid roll the intro. This week on everything you need to know, the $120,000 sailboat. I can't believe I just noticed it in the last few days that this is actually episode 199. We're almost at 200 YouTube episodes, guys. At about an episode a week, that's four years of episodes. And they started really, really bad of just me lake sailing Lady K around the Great Lakes and racing her. And at the time, I had no idea that within a few months, I'd be headed south, throw off the dock line, sell everything I own, and take that same GoPro and go. And I think, I like to think, the episode started to get better. You guys actually started watching and subscribing, which blew my mind. All the way along from the living on a boat cruising life thing to hiding from the hurricanes on Chesapeake Bay to almost sinking in the Bahamas off the coast of Staniel Key. And you guys had my back the whole way. Remember when I hit a crab pot and wrapped it up around the prop on the Delaware Bay alone at night? Talk about a wild ride. Since then, you guys have stuck with me for the Everything You Need to Know series that we're doing now while I get Lady K ready to go on another great adventure. And a huge thank you to everyone who watches, likes the video, subscribes, chats with me on Facebook and Instagram and now Discord. Um, and a huge thank you to the patrons who've been there, um, who make it possible. There would really be no channel, there'd be no Lady K sailing without, without all the love and support. All right, let's get into it. It's no secret that I'm an avid watcher of a YouTube channel called VinWiki, which is largely just guys and girls sitting around telling stories about cars, stories about their lives that sort of revolved around a car, the car they grew up with that their dad had, things like that. But the host, Ed Bolian, is a guy I really admire. And we're going to talk about a boat that I'm going to call the Ed Bolian Special. Stay with me here. Now, Ed is famous for buying the cheapest possible example of an amazing car. For example, he currently owns three Lamborghini Murcielagos, but not one of them he paid for at market value because Ed loves a car with a good story, perhaps a salvage title and throw in some water damage for good measure, something he can pick up for dirt cheap that nobody else wants to buy so he can lowball the out of the seller. Um, throw a bunch of money at the car once he's bought it, and eventually sell it for a profit, usually after driving it for two or three years as his own car. He's making money owning supercars. So can we do that with a boat? Can we Ed Bolian a boat? Can we get something that we definitely can't afford because it has a shaky history? Well, I think I found one. This is a Lagoon 410 with, let's say, an interesting story. Now these usually sell for 250 to 300 grand in good shape, but this one's listed for 119 with room to negotiate based on the survey. The broker actually says that in the ad, there's room to negotiate. Now the eagle eye viewer will notice obviously that this is in fact a catamaran and we don't usually talk about cats, but largely that's because you can't just get a catamaran for this cheap. It hasn't come up yet in our budgetary episodes, but with this one, you can. And the ad reads, this is a project boat that needs work and extra effort from new handy owners. She started out as a long-term charter boat, something you'd charter for two or three weeks and sail it around the Virgin Islands. Uh, and then it became a day charter with a captain in the Virgin Islands. And then Hurricane Irma came. And if you remember the carnage, Hurricane Irma wiped out untold amounts of these boats, as well as many people's homes and livelihoods. The broker does say that this boat was on the hard, not in the water during the hurricane, which is good because everything that was in the water during that hurricane in the BVIs sunk. 
but she wasn't untouched by the hurricane. She lost her rig and she was damaged. But since then, the rig has been replaced. It's brand new, as well as the engines being rebuilt or replaced. And all the electronics and other equipment have been replaced. So can you own a $300,000 Lagoon Cat for hundred grand? It turns out, yes, you can. And what you do next is largely up to you. I'd probably move aboard and start working on the boat myself to save money on the labor, and then turn her back into a pristine example of a great boat. Some folks might actually prefer not to do that. They might just buy her and throw a bunch of money at all her problems and end up with a pristine example of a great boat. Either way, you end up with a $300,000 cat you can cruise on for way less than the sticker price of going and buying it. Now I bring this boat up because I think it is a real option for someone willing to get into it and take the risk and deal with the work. For most of you, it may not be a good idea. How do I insure this boat? How much will it actually cost to restore? Why bother with the whole mess in the first place? Now my answer to you there is, you bother with it if you have your heart set on a 40 something foot Caribbean catamaran, but you don't have $300,000 to buy one. This then is an opportunity for the brave, but slightly broke people like me, and I suspect some of you, to pay less for a great boat, but spend a lot more time and work to make it pristine again and sort of meet smack dab in the middle owning a Lagoon Caribbean catamaran. Our next boat we're going to look at today is nothing short of breathtaking. If you aren't into those newer IKEA finishes and production boats and you need some of that classic decor, the classic vibe on a boat that's been extensively refit and outfitted specifically to cross the Atlantic Ocean, then this boat might be for you. This is the mighty Morgan 50 and this particular example has had countless dollars, tens of thousands I suspect, spent to make her the perfect boat for a small family to cross oceans with and live aboard in absolute comfort and safety. Everything from brand new air conditioning units and sails, new heads, new electronics and equipment. This is a 36,000 pound monster of an ocean going boat needing just five and a half feet of water under her winged keel, which means you can still go to the Bahamas, but 70 feet at mast height for her huge sail plan and her keel step mast. And speaking of masts, this one has her own radar mast off the transom. And I don't mean they bolted a post onto the transom. This is part of the boat. It goes through the transom. Imagine how much work that took. Inside you get monumental space in the saloon with a big TV on the wall and seating that actually looks like you could live on this boat the way you live in your house. And the woodwork, wow. And I say wow looking at just the pictures. This is the kind of boat that people walk into and just stop and take it all in. Totally in awe of how beautiful this boat is. The saloon is so spacious that they even have an area rug on the floor. Who has an area rug on their boat? Everything in this 50 footer is huge. The staterooms, the beds, the forward head that you can actually run around in it's so big. Even the anchor locker is so oversized that you can fit a person inside. I mean, if you don't like the person, but hey, you would save you money on the windlass. Now it's not lost on me that this is a boat from the 80s, but if it's in as good a shape as they say it's in and the broker says it's in, what are you really giving up? It has door aids and hatches all over the deck to let the air and the light in. It has a transom with steps that you can walk up and down from the dinghy. It has the rails around the mast for safety. It even comes with a life raft. Now this isn't some boat that's been chartered and it's sitting in you know some island in the Caribbean. This thing's actually sitting in Florida right now just waiting for her new owner to take her anywhere they want. Um, and it's one heck of a tough boat. When you hear people say the boat will outlast the crew like in an emergency or a storm, this is the boat that they're talking about. Next up we have a relatively unique boat and it's weird because we don't see these. And I mean ever. This is a far designed boat. And what that means is it's fast because that's what FAR does. They make race boats, but this boat is also a cruising boat. This is the Beneteau 463. And at first glance, you might be confused. The hull shape is not your daddy's Beneteau. It's too sleek and the bow is too raked. The cockpit comes up to the coach top level and the transom is more like an open design race boat, but this is a charter boat. What's going on here? You might be looking at the pictures thinking, if this thing, looking that good and fast, ends up giving me an interior, 
of a small palace, a huge galley and a good-sized head, as well as a centerline owner's stateroom, I'm going to lose my mind. And if you're thinking that, prepare for the loss, because it does all of those things. Now, I'm looking at these pictures thinking, I'm sorry, but I get a fast hull designed by far. I get a massive, comfortable, safe cockpit. I get a big, racy steering wheel and a beach for a transom with storage lockers built into it for the wet gear. I get door raids. I get all the hatches and port lights and brand new interior and canvas. And this cabin, I get the best master cabin V-berth I've ever seen for under 200 grand. I get a huge saloon with full length galley, a massive head and shower. And I also get two extra cabins at the back. One honestly is gonna be for storage, but the other one can be for guests. And I get all this for 115 grand? Seriously, what's going on here? Next, you're gonna tell me that it was recently repowered in 2017 with a brand new diesel with almost no hours on it. Yep, yeah, it has that too with two brand new air conditioning units and a brand new electric windlass. Yeah, it has all that. I really do struggle to find anything wrong with this boat, even at 115 grand. It's everything on my personal checklist, short of dinghy davits and a pile of solar panels. But I can add those things. If you slap a dinghy on this back of this thing, she is headed to the Caribbean, my friends. Now let's say that last boat was a little too Benetoe for you. Maybe too much boat to single hand because, I mean, it was quite a big boat. And let's also say you have a weird fetish for teak and you'd like a 31 foot boat, but not at 31 foot money. You don't want a cheap 31. You want a 31 you can spend $125,000 on. Now I'm sure you'd imagine a 31 foot boat for 125 grand, it's almost laughable. It would have to be one hell of a boat, right? Well, I give you one hell of a boat. This is a Halberg Razzie 31. And for those who don't know, I'm sure you all do know, but for those who don't know, Halberg Razzie is known the world over to make some of the toughest, nicest, and safest cruising boats ever made. And the price always shows it. This 31 is absolutely beautiful from every angle. And being in Halberg Razzie, it's as capable as any other boat out there on the ocean even though it's only 31 feet. In fact, if teak isn't the theme with this boat, the theme is, wow, this thing is only 31 feet long. This masterpiece takes fit and finish to Leonardo da Vinci levels of beautiful. Now, obviously you won't be running around inside, but you will be extremely impressed with everything you see. Outside you get the trademark hard dodger that Halberg Razzie is known for, and robust sailing gear from the winches to the blocks and the tracks. Everything is overbuilt. You also get a very well-protected cockpit with high combings and everything exactly where it should be because these people know what they're doing and they know exactly how it should be, right down to the tiller steering. This is classic plastic meets modern luxury meets exceptional build quality. Inside, you get the forward center line berth, a standard layout in the saloon because that's all there really is room for, a large galley that any single couple could live with for extended periods. Out back, you get a nice sized aft cabin to port and a massive comfortable head to starboard with a shower. What's not to love about this Halberg Razzie? I can't think of anything other than who is this boat for? If you're a single couple young enough to want to live on this boat, you don't have 125 grand to spend on it anyway. If you're an older couple who does have 125 grand, you'll just buy a Catalina 42. I mean, you'll daydream of how stunning and beautiful this Razzie is, but you'll still buy a production boat. I just don't see this boat selling all that well. I, I mean, I wish it did, it's gorgeous. Okay guys, that's it for this week. We'll pack in more next week, I promise. A huge thank you to everyone who is subscribed. We just this morning, at like 6 a.m. cleared 40,000 subscribers. I am just in awe of you guys. You're all legends and I love you. I will see you guys next week for episode 200. I think we should do something special. And after that, I will see you in Annapolis to look at all the pretty boats. See you guys then. Bye.